Greetings and welcome to the second part of Lecture 6 of EEE 23. Uh, recall that from the previous lecture, we've, I, I introduced to you capacitance. And uh, let's recap of everything that uh, I have taught you of, or I have lectured so far here in EEE 23. Or at least, no, not EEE 23, sorry. Uh, here in uh, this lecture right here and some review of the previous uh, part of EEE 23. So the relationship between D and E is defined by epsilon in free space. Uh, if we are in a dielectric, this becomes epsilon. Uh, point form of Gauss law is just this. Del dot E is equal to rho V or the charge distribution. So the divergence of your flux density is the charge distribution rho V. There's a, the relationship between V and E is defined by the gradient uh, operator. So if you take the gradient of the potential function, you get the uh, electric field function or the electric field. Okay, so basically, there's a kind of a relationship between V to Rho. So we can relate, this is weird, right? We can relate the charge, volume charge density to the scalar field. Can we find an expression then that can relate them? So without going through E. So if we combine these three equations, okay, so del dot D and D is equal to epsilon E. Okay, and E is equal to basically gradient of V. So we get this expression right here that is equal to rho V. Right? And epsilon is just a scalar, so we can factor that out. Becomes this. So the divergence of the gradient of V is equal to negative rho V over epsilon. If the charge density is zero, then becomes this expression right here. This is called Poisson's equation. If there is no charge density, it becomes Laplace's equation. And uh, this nabla squared or del squared, this operation is called the Laplacian of V. And it's defined by this. So in Cartesian coordinates, it's just the second derivative over different directions. In cylindrical coordinates, uh, kind of more complicated expression. Okay, but you'll see some. Uh, uh, it's uh, you'll see some similarities with the divergence. In spherical, it's <laughs> this hell right here. Okay, it's there's no need to memorize this. Okay. So that's the definition of Laplacian, and it's the second derivative with respect to space, if you can think about it. Second derivative with respect to space, and there are different definitions in Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. So some remarks, uh, any expression for potential is valid if it satisfies Laplace or Poisson's equation. So if you have a potential function, uh, if you got a potential function, if you evaluate the Laplacian of that, it should result to zero if there are no charge in space or Poisson's equation if there are charges in space. Okay. So uh, this, uh, two, these two equations relate the potential field to the charge density in a region. So just some note that in electrical engineering, uh, charges the charge distribution is usually not known but if you know the distribution or the uh, the geometry of your uh, of your material you can actually apply a voltage okay you can get the charge distribution over that material anyway uh, Poisson and Laplace are also uh, bound or actually as a property of uniqueness if there are two solutions, V1 and V2, satisfy both uh, or uh, one of the equations and both satisfy the same boundary conditions, so they have the same boundaries, then V1 and V2 are identical. So that means V1 is equal to 
v2. Okay, so they must satisfy the Laplace and Poisson's equation with the same boundary conditions for them to be identical. So, for example, uh, consider the one-dimensional problem. The differential equation, there you go. There is no charge in the region. So, by Laplace's equation, you can get the Laplacian of V in one dimension becomes zero. Now, since this, uh, it can, since this is just a derivative with one variable, your partial derivative becomes basically full derivative so ordinary derivative we can solve for v as a function of x by integrating twice okay so integrate this dv over dx becomes a integrate that again v is equal to ax plus b so um, at this point you need boundary conditions to uh, get the expression for a and b since these are arbitrary constants so if we let v is equal to v1 at some x is equal to x1 and v is equal to v2 at some x is equal to x2 then we can get the value of a and b by solving them simultaneously you have two equations and two unknowns you can solve for a and b simultaneously or and you get uh, a and b just substitute it to the original equation b here a here and you'll get this expression for the voltage Okay. If we set uh, the origin x is equal to zero to have a ground to be ground v is equal to zero, and um, some at some distance d, you'll get the voltage v is equal to v naught. Okay. The voltage uh, function becomes this expression right here, v naught x over d. So. Uh, some remarks uh, since you already have the voltage so you can actually get the capacitance using Laplace equation so you have the potential field for this region so you can get the electric field using well negative gradient okay. um, you can use this equation to find the flux density and um, you can look at the boundaries if it's a conductor or if it's a uh, electric field boundary by uh, doing the boundary conditions. And for a conductor, well, basically the conductor kind of absorbs the or absorbs the charge, uh, the flux density, and becomes a uh, surface charge density. And you can get Q by getting the integration over that conductor over the surface. So for this uh, expression here, this is actually the same as your parallel plate capacitor. You have a plane at x is equal to 0. So this is this plane. You have a plane at x is equal to d, which is this plane. Okay. At x is equal to 0, there's uh, 0 voltage. At this point, you have... Uh, some voltage V sub zero or V naught. So to get the electric field, get the gradient of the potential function becomes this expression. Get the uh, flux density, you just multiply epsilon. So this is epsilon in this region. At this point, at this boundary, you can see that this boundary is between your dielectric and your conductor. Since this is a conductor, uh, the charge density at this point becomes this okay? becomes equal to the flux density at that point which is this one okay. so you can compute for Q so just integrate rho s with respect to the surface and you'll get this expression right here and finally you can solve for the capacitance by um, dividing the absolute value of the charge divided by the applied voltage V sub zero or the voltage difference between the two plates right there okay so we use the absolute value because it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive here you're just uh, concerned with the magnitude of the charge to get the capacitance capacitance can never be negative All right so if you get the magnitude of the charge here 
since this is at x is equal to zero and at the lower potential it means the charges here are actually negative and the positive charges are found here at the other plate so if you apply all these to uh, this part of the problem at x is equal to d you'll actually get the positive q but this positive q is just the same in magnitude as your negative q so why bother All right. So another example is the potential only varies with rho. This looks familiar again. It's actually your coaxial cable. So if the potential only varies with rho, then we have this expression right here. Okay. So since rho is in the denominator, we exclude rho is equal to zero in the solution. Because if rho is equal to zero, your uh, expression blows up. Alright. So, multiply both sides by rho. So, that means you cannot let rho be equal to zero. Then, we integrate. Okay, so, integrate this. So, it, just, it will just be a, con a constant, A. So, it's this expression. So, uh, flip. Okay, so Sorry, not flip. Cross multiply. Get this expression. Integrate that again. This is your scalar uh, potential function. So, Roy's constant is actually a cylinder. So, that's your cylindrical capacitor right here. Okay. So, if we have, if we set the voltage at rho is equal to A right here, the voltage is uh, zero. So, this is grounded inside. And the voltage at B is equal to, sorry, the voltage at A is V sub 0, and the voltage at B is 0, so this uh, outer conductor is grounded. You'll get this expression for your voltages. So evaluate that. You can solve for A and B. So solving for A and B, get this expression for A, this for B. So solve them simultaneously using these two equations. Substitute that back to the uh, expression here. And uh, the potential function is equal to this expression. So V is now a function of rho only. You can get the negative gradient of V to end up with this expression for the electric field. And since it's only varying in uh, rho, then it will just become a rho hat. Okay? So you can solve for the uh, electric flux density. By multiplying epsilon, we get this, and with, this is equal to rho s, which is the surface charge density at the uh, boundary here or here. So in this case, uh, we're just going to go get the uh, flux density at rho is equal to A right here. So the flux density here is equal to the charge distribution on the surface of A, and that is this expression. You can solve for the total charge by multiplying it by to the surface area of the cylinder. So your epsilon v sub zero multiplied by the surface area of the cylinder. So that's two pi al. So that's the charge uh, in the conductor or on the conductor, and you just divide it this divided by this. So you divide that at rho is equal to A. So you're considering rho is equal to A. So divide that at rho is equal to A. Uh, v naught is cancelled. You'll be left with 2 pi epsilon. So this A is cancelled also. 2 pi epsilon L divided by ln B over A. And it's actually similar to the capacitance that we got by analyzing the electric field of the uh, coaxial cable. Okay. Okay, so finally, we have some weird distribution here. How do we solve V uh, if it's only a, it's a function of phi only? So the uh, Laplace equation is now this expression. So it's only a function of phi. So again, we exclude rho is equal to zero from the solution. So we can multiply rho squared to both sides. And we get this expression. Integrate it twice. Looks familiar, actually. 
we've already encountered that here. Okay. So that's A phi over plus B. Solve for A and B again. If we let uh, phi equals zero to be grounded and uh, some voltage V naught at phi is equal to some angle alpha. We get this expression right here. So if the plate at phi is equal to zero is bounded by rho is equal to A and uh, rho is equal to B, so it's from A to B, here you go, and uh, B is greater than A, and Z is equal to L, so that's from zero to L, in the vertical so it becomes not they're not parallel plate capacitors but they are still conducting plates that have a separation between them so if we let that be so it has a potential function that's this okay so zero at phi is equal to zero and v naught here get the negative gradient of that becomes this we can solve for the uh, electric flux density by multiplying epsilon becomes this and that is equal to the charge density at the plates so you can solve for the total charge by multiplying it to the area of the plate right here something like this so the area of the plate is just well you integrate that with respect to d rho dz since the plates are uh, are faced along a phi hat so you integrate that with d rho and dz. The total charge is this. You can solve for the capacitance by dividing the charge with the voltage. Right. And you'll be left with this expression right here. And that is the capacitance for this weird capacitor right here. And that's the end of this lecture. If you have any questions, again, just uh, post a comment below. Uh, answer them as soon as possible. Okay? Or just you can also ask them, ask those questions in class. Why not? Okay. So this concludes the lecture on capacitance. And uh, concludes the lectures on electric fields. So yes, uh, you have you have finished the lectures on electric fields, and we'll be moving on to uh, uh, magnetic fields. All right, so expect that on the next lecture. And uh, as usual, uh, I'll see you when I see you.